Welcome to part two. Mo is president in 2017, if I can just quickly remind you. Yeah. And the Supreme Court has just nullified, declared his election as president null and void. And his handlers tell him, we need to tame the Supreme Court. Now I'll tell you what Moy would not have done. He would not have come out with a statement, we shall revisit. He would certainly not have called the Supreme Court Wakoras. Now what has made this particular situation worse is that we live in the digital age. Yeah, uh, It is not possible to use the classic old excuse. I was misquoted by the press. Eh? The press uh, took my message and uh, completely misinterpreted it. Yeah? You cannot give that excuse anymore. Because with instant playback on YouTube and in many other platforms online, you will hear exactly what the president said in crystal clear language. While in all likelihood, in my view, Moy would have indeed tried to tame the Supreme Court, he would not have come out with public statements of his intention. In my view, that is leadership. It's a bad thing, but uh, in sharp contrast, that is leadership. That is maturity. That is a president acting. Moy alikuwa nafanya vitu zake zote chini ya maji. Yeah, loosely translated, it would all be done in the background, behind the scenes, in boardrooms, away from uh, being recorded in public, uh, telling all and sundry his intentions. To sum up everything, if uh, one were to say that Moy was a benevolent dictator, yeah, and indeed I believe he was in my view, yeah, uh, it is safe to say that actually the rule of President Moy is the closest we've ever come to a benevolent dictator. Why? Because Moy was very mindful of the common man, of the man down there. Yeah? And indeed, if you look at the current crisis, who has suffered most? It's the ordinary Kenyan. Let me just give you one example. In the 80s, there was a very serious food crisis in Kenya, unprecedented. Yeah? And of course, the person to suffer most was the common man, because the common man relies on Ugali. To Moi, any crisis, following the, uh, any crisis befalling the common man was a national crisis of highest priority. I'm sorry to say this, but it's a fact. With the current Jubilee government, that is not the situation. With the current Uhuru Kenyatta presidency, that is not the priority. Now, during that food uh, crisis, Moi went out of his way, yeah, worked his contacts, uh, talked to foreign governments, did everything in his power to ensure that there was enough maize in the country. Yeah? And while at it kept away the cartels, yeah, and the people wanted to profit from it uh, well away from uh, what he was doing. And so we ended up with a lot of yellow maize in the country. Yeah, we are told that this yellow maize normally is for horses. <laughs> yeah, But... Uh, it was edible, yeah, and it kept the country going. And that crisis passed. Indeed, Moy's handling of this crisis uh, <laughs> attracted the attention of uh, great Western powers, including the United States, yeah, who praised him for the way he handled the whole situation, for the way he was so caring for the vast majority of uh, the Kenyan population. And the vast majority of Kenyan people sensed this care that the president had for them. And so, the current levels of uh, tension in the country, yeah, most of it from hopelessness, yeah, in the midst of the vast majority of Kenyans in the masses, would not have been there. People would have had their demonstrations uh, in major cities like Nairobi and Mombasa. Yeah, NGOs would meet and uh, you know discuss and criticize the government, but the masses were not with them. Now, at the height of Moe's uh, unpopularity. You would go to any rural area in Kenya, of course with an exception of Central Province. Yeah, Central Province just wanted Moy out at all costs. Yeah, anyway, you'd go to virtually any other rural area uh, in Kenya and you'd find a divided opinion. Yeah, there are those who would say uh, Moy must go, but then there are those who would say uh, Moy has been a good president. Yeah, that is a fact. In sharp contrast today, if you go to any rural area in Kenya, even the so-called Jubilee strongholds, you'll hear people complaining. This government that, this government that, you know, this government this. Yes, 
the the fascinating thing is that while people uh, were prepared on August uh, last year to vote along tribal lines, yeah, uh, if you ask them, they are not happy. Now, granted, it's impossible for any leader, yeah, not you know that's not human nature. It's impossible for any leader to satisfy everybody, to make everybody in their country happy. That is impossible. However, the truth is that the current Jubilee government, the style of the current Jubilee government, has not been focused on the common man. And that is one weakness which the opposition has exploited to the full. Yeah? That is one aspect which the opposition has used yeah, to gain tremendous yeah, following and support right across the country. Dictator Moy, yeah, as much as he was a dictator, as much as his government was draconian, displayed clear leadership, something that we are really missing right now in Kenya. Now, one of the other things about the Moy presidency that would have been different this time around is that Moy used to know how to take away the agenda from the opposition. Yeah, it was one of uh, the strategies he used to implement <laughs> that would leave his friends and foes puzzled and uh, not understanding completely. Yeah, until things started to unfold. Then they would just call Moya genius. Now let's take a look at the last big crisis before the current crisis. And this was the push for the country to return to multi-party democracy. Yeah. Now the situation got so serious. Tensions were so high in the country. There had even been demonstrations, you know, the famous Sabasaba demonstrations where Kenyans had been killed. Yeah. And definitely the country was headed towards a crisis. But fortunately for Kenya at that time, we had leadership. And so what Moy did, he did something that really puzzled his supporters. All of a sudden, yeah, and he had sworn that the country would never go into multi-party democracy, yeah. He had even said something close to over my dead body, the country will not go, into, uh, will not go uh, back into multi-party democracy because we are not cohesive enough as a society. That's what he used to say, yeah. It will bring tribalism, yeah. Very, very prophetic words, but that's a story for another day. But what Moy did, very suddenly and without any warning, he accepted. And he told his Kanu people, we're going to accept multi-party democracy. We're going to scrap that part of the constitution that has declared Kenya a single-party state. Out of the blue, Moy suddenly legalized uh, multi-party democracy in Kenya. Now, of course, looking back in retrospect, what actually happened? is that when Moy made this announcement, announcement, he was already six months, one year ahead of the opposition. Yeah, he had already put his plans in place. He had already made inroads into the opposition. And he knew for a fact that uh, there would be no united opposition to stand against him in any presidential election. But let, let's look at the effect politically. Politically, <laughs> it just took away the steam from the opposition. Yeah, it took away the entire agenda. Because they had all been fighting, let's go back to multi-party democracy. We want multi-party democracy. We must have multi-party democracy. Suddenly, Moe said, there, I've given it to you. Now, <laughs> that left them puzzled. Because now, first of all, they didn't have an agenda. Because what do they fight for? Yeah, multi-party democracy is back in the country. Yeah, there's nothing else left to fight for. There's nothing else to, to fight for. Yeah. Uh, it is the same as you have a vehicle, uh, it is running, uh, it is going at full speed, then suddenly you find a way to suck out all the fuel from it. <laughs> yeah, the vehicle can't move. It will just go, slow down and stop. Yeah, because there's no fuel, you have just taken away the fuel from it. In one smart move, Moin neutralized all opposition. Of course the opposition are very happy, yeah. And indeed, they had a very large meeting of uh, the, the single uh, opposition party at that time, which was or rather the opposition movement, which was known as the Forum for Restoration of Democracy, FORD. Yeah? They had a big meeting at Kamkunji that have, uh, must have sent chills down state house. It was crowded. It was packed. It was full of people. Yeah? Very similar to the swearing-in of Raila Odinga on January 30th, uh, 2018. Now at the time, everybody thought Moy was shaking in his boots inside State House. Even my political lecturer thought the same. But actually, Moy was very relaxed. Yeah, why was he relaxed? He was six months, 
one year, two years ahead of all his opponents. He knew exactly what was going to go down next. Yeah, and he knew that he was going to remain in power. He had already made his plans in the background. Yeah, but meanwhile, even foreign envoys congratulated Moy. They said he had taken a very wise decision. Yeah, and the tension, <laughs> the massive tension, just eased. Yeah, but Moy had made his plans. He was very relaxed. Yeah, he knew exactly what he had done. He had uh, well laid plans in place. And uh, there was no reason to panic. He knew very well that he was going to remain in power. And the suffering of the ordinary Kenyan was halted. People went back to normal life. Yeah, and the ordinary Kenyan uh, was happy, more or less. Okay, that is leadership. Something that we badly need in Kenya right now. Now, the other thing Moi would not have done would have been to disobey court orders. In all Moi's 24 years rule, the government of Kenya never, never, ever disobeyed a single court order. And there were, some, there were plenty of court orders that went against them. Moi always dealt with the problems behind the scenes. Moi always dealt with the problems away from public limelight. Now, one of the people in my panel who I consulted yeah, over the Moy presidency, and whom I consider to be a Moy expert. Yeah, he's now at an advanced stage, but definitely knows a lot. Had a very interesting thesis. Yeah, he said, rather than disobey court orders, Moy would have reintroduced detention without trial. Rather than going through extrajudicial killings, yeah, like Jacob Juma, yeah, and the very, very gory uh, killing of uh, the late Msando, yeah, what Moy would have done would have been to reintroduce detention without trial. Now, of course, you're going to get hit very hard for introducing draconian laws. Yeah, but that is a lot better. Yeah, than somebody accusing you of uh, defying court orders and not ruling by using the law and the constitution. Yeah, nobody's going to accuse you of uh, acting outside the law, which is a recipe for disaster and which is exactly what the current Jubilee government is doing. Now, just to follow up on uh, the thought train of this uh, very, very experienced uh, Moy expert, he said that during Moy's entire 24-year rule, yes, we never had extrajudicial killings. Okay? Indeed, during Moy's entire career as President of the Republic of Kenya, there's only one assassination, that of Robert John Oko, the Foreign Affairs Minister. And there are those who say the death of uh, Oko was indeed accidental, yeah, that Moy was brought into the picture when it was too late, yeah, when the options were very, very limited. And I'm one of the people who believes on that, in that theory, yeah. Instead, Moy used detention without trial to deal with uh, people who have otherwise been eliminated, yeah. And it's very interesting because immediately Moy left power, when Kibaki came back into power, the Kibaki government was in a very, very big hurry to go back into extrajudicial killings. It seems that the security advisors, yeah, who had gone dry for 24 years, eh, Bila Kumwaga Damu, no bloodletting, no killings, no exciting killings of ordinary Kenyans, yeah, were really eager and trigger happy to go back into killing people. And we saw the very, very sad bloodletting of ordinary citizens yeah, via extrajudicial killings that happened during the Kibaki uh, administration. Indeed, very shortly after he had taken over, they resumed the vengeance. Yeah? <laughs> they had gone over a dry spell for too long, 24 years. And according to this Mze, this is why whatever you say about retired President Moi, yeah, He's quietly enjoying his retirement. Yes, people are saying he's interfering in the politics. Yes, people are saying he has an input into politics. But uh, the old man does not have any ghosts to haunt him. Yeah? He's comfortable. And many, many Kenyans are looking back at his tenure as president uh, with some longing. You know, they're saying, oh, there was less tribalism then. The country was in less of a mess then. Yes, it was a dictatorship. But life was much, much better than it is in today's Jubilee government Kenya. And that is a fact. Until next time, 
This is Chris Kumekucha. Oh,